Hi, my name's Ed Nolan and I'm an A-level psychology teacher and in today's film we're going to just introduce you gently to inferential statistics. Now some people get a little worried about inferential statistics and that's a bit of maths but really it's not too difficult once you bear with it and, and have a look at it. All you've got to remember is there are three types of people in this world, those who can count and those who can't. Now, I'm looking at my students and thinking, right, I'm wondering here, some of my students are using textbooks, some are using YouTube clips to prepare for their exams. Which one is going to be more effective? So I'm going to investigate that. So like a good psychologist, I create a hypothesis and there it is. There will be a difference in the test scores when using a textbook to learn information than when using YouTube clips. So I'm going to go out and test my hypotheses. So what do I do? I get a group of students, give them a textbook and say, we need to learn this material here. And there they are, all anxiously engaged, bent over, really interested in their books. And then I give another group of students a list of YouTube clips to watch. And there they are looking at them. However, they seem to be enjoying that a bit too much. Um, I guess it's not a YouTube clip on inferential statistics. So then what do I do? I give them a test um, out of 100 and I find out who learns the most. So remember, I'm trying to expect or I'm expecting to find a difference. So my hypothesis says that there's going to be a difference in the test scores, whether they use a um, textbook or YouTube clip. I'm not quite sure which way it's going to go. That's why it's a non-directional hypothesis. And there's my data. Well, great, I've got, I've got some data. Um, does it support my hypotheses? Well, I think, well, I know what I can do. I know I can use my descriptive statistics and find a measure of central tendency. So there we go, there's the mean data. So I know now that on average, my textbook learners got 66 out of 100 and my YouTube learners got 72. Great. I've got some problems though, because I did use different students in both of my conditions. And you know what? The differences could have just occurred by chance. And I'm not sure if they did or not. My hypothesis says that there will be a difference. The problem is there is always a difference in a different study. And there will always be some form of relationship in a correlational study. The question is, is the difference big enough? that um, I can make a firm conclusion, or did it just happen by chance? So with my hypotheses, I've got a problem here because I might have a difference by chance, or there could be a significant difference. Now, as a good scientist knows, you can't just let chance happenings um, support your hypotheses. You really need to be quite certain. So I don't need chance. I need significance. I like that word significant. It means lots. It doesn't mean you can really trust it. Yeah, it means that something's going on. So I'm going to change my hypotheses now. So my hypothesis now, if I can say it right, is that there is, will be a significant difference in the test scores when using a textbook to learn information compared to using YouTube films. And now I have a null hypothesis which says that any difference in the test scores between the textbook and the YouTube films is due to chance. So I always know there will be a difference, but it's whether my difference is significant or whether it's just due to chance. So where do inferential statistics come into all of this? Well, what do they do? Well, our inferential statistics, what they do is they calculate the probability that my results occurred by chance. So this then establishes whether I can say it's a chance finding or a significant finding. So I'm sure you did this in your GCSE psychology, not psychology, maths classes, where you looked at probabilities. Sorry about that. Everything's psychology to me. Um, maths classes, yeah, you did probabilities. And so if I got a coin and I flip my coin, um, what, would I, what was the chance or what's the probability that I will get heads? Well, it's 50%, isn't it? And you know, there's two sides to that coin. It's likely to be 50% chance that I will get a head. Okay. Now, sometimes that is written like this, 0 0.50. Because 1 is a whole, so therefore 0 0.5 is 50% of 1. If it was a one-sided coin 
or they were both heads, it would be one. So that's 0 0.5, um, 0, 50%. Okay, are we okay? So 50% though, could be written like this. That's not great, is it? If I, if I say, well, look, 50% that it's by chance that I get a head, that's not great. That's not something um, we need to um, base our conclusions on. So maybe we need to drop the probability down. Now, the generally accepted kind of minimum level that we can drop our probabilities down to say something is significant is 0.05 or 5%. This is called a significance level. If we're saying that our difference occurred by chance and the probability that it occurred by chance is 5% or less, that's, that level means it's significant. That means we can accept our um, research hypotheses. If we're saying that actually our results is more than 5%, if the um, difference was more than 5% due to chance, suddenly that's not a level of significance. Uh, that is less than our level of significance. And we really need to accept our null hypotheses. So remember I said that it is a minimum level of significance most researchers will go beyond that to either one percent or half a percent or even further they will say we're not going to accept our hypotheses unless we can rule out chance there so let's go back to that again if a researcher identifies through the statistical test if that's calculated that the probability that their difference or relationship happened by chance was five percent or less meaning they have a 95% confidence level, they'll accept their hypotheses. But if it goes beyond that, if it is um, greater than 5%, there's that element of doubt there that this could have just happened by chance. It's not significant. We're going to say it's chance. Okay, so level of significances are usually written as 0.05 or 0.01 or 0.005. Now, sometimes you'll see a little P in front of them, as you can see there on the right hand side. That P just means probability. Now, you should be familiar with the less than sign. So I might say that if the probability is less than 0.055% to chance, I'm going to accept my hypotheses. That is the level of which I'm going to say it is significant. Back to my study then, I'm looking at textbook and YouTube. Here's my hypotheses, here's my data. So what I did was I used a um, inferential statistical test called a man with a U to see if my data fell below the level of significance. And this is what I found. What this means is, is the probability that my um, difference occurred by chance was greater than 5%. So what does that mean for my hypotheses? It means that I've got to say on all hypotheses correct, I've got to accept that because I can't rule out chance. It's due to chance. And so therefore I will reject my research hypotheses. So I guess it didn't matter whether you use YouTube or textbooks. Um, it's about something else. So what have we learned today? We've learned that there will always be a difference or relationship in data from research, always. And so the research hypotheses needs to predict a significant difference for us to accept that. And the null hypotheses will predict that any difference or relationship is due to chance. We've learned that inferential statistics then are calculate the probability of data occurring by chance. And that we use a level of significance with the probabilities to accept our hypotheses. And the most commonly minimal level of significance that is accepted is 0 0.05, meaning that the probability that our results just occur by chance is 5% or less. And that probabilities can be presented with a little um, mathematical stuff in front, the P and the less than. Well, well done. We've had our introduction to statistics. I hope this has been useful to you and uh, 
Good luck with all the rest of your learning. Goodbye.